the eyes of pride. When it comes to our issues with eating and food, we have gotten our bodies out of shape from eating too much food, from bypassing hunger, and from binging and purging and being totally obsessed about eating. The heart of the issue is not about food, eating, or our body image. The heart of the issue is pride. An example in the New Testament that comes to mind is the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. It is aimed at those who trusted in themselves and thought that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. The Pharisee and the tax collector can help us recognize our own spiritual pride. It tells of a much despised tax collector and a self-righteous Pharisee who went up to the temple to pray. The Pharisee proceeds to commend himself to God because of his careful observance of the law and to look down with scornful contempt on the sinful tax collector. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. Notice in his prayer that his focus is not really on God at all, but on how good he is and how bad others are. Here is pride wrapped in the cloak of religion and given it a bad name. But what about my prayers? Do I think I am better than others because I eat between the parameters of hunger and satisfaction? Am I more righteous before God because I am following the way God created me to eat between the parameters of hunger and fullness? God desires that I walk with Him in every area of my life and I do not look down on others because they have not been touched by the Master. To have a transformation within the temple God has entrusted them with, but I need to continue to pray for them. The tax collector is so painfully aware of his sins and unworthiness before God that he cannot even lift his eyes as he stands in the back of the temple far from the altar. With a sorrowful heart over his sins, he can manage only the desperate plea, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. It is only by God's grace that the Lord has broken the chains in my life with dieting, weight loss programs, restricted eating, and counting of calories, fat grams, or carbohydrates. The tax collector is very focused on his own sins, not the sins of others, and especially on his need for God's mercy. Jesus said that God answered the tax collector's prayer, not the Pharisee's. Then he concludes with his main point that everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Many times I have had my own prideful heart and thinking, Lord, I thank you that I am not like the proud Pharisee. Or say, Lord, I thank you I am not like Mary Jane who is stuck to the rules of dieting. With this kind of thinking, I am no different than the Pharisee. It would be easy to say that pride is the special problem of those who are rich, powerful, successful, famous, or self-righteous, but that is wrong. It takes many shapes and forms and effects, all of us to some degree. The chronic preoccupation with self in America culture is rooted in pride and can intensify our emotional problems. Pride can be summarized as an attitude of self-sufficiency, self-importance, and self-exaltation in relation to God. Towards others, it is an attitude of contempt and indifference. My focus needs to be on fixing the sin problem in my own heart, not the sin problem of others. God is showing me that my reliance needs to be totally on Him. And I need to be concerned about my own heart, not the heart condition of others. So just as the Pharisee looked down on the tax collector, I too was looking down at the Pharisee. I too was looking down at those using something besides the word of God in prayer to overcome eating issues. I had to trust in the Lord to enable me to overcome this pridefulness in my life. It was pride that caused Lucifer to be cast out of heaven and Adam and Eve to be cast out of Eden. It is pride that will be our undoing 
if we tolerate it in our lives. The danger of pride is soberly reality that each of us needs to realize that pride is our greatest enemy. That same pride that has caused Adam and Eve to eat of the fruit in the Garden of Eden is the pride that caused me to be compelled, obsessed, and self-dependent to get my eyes off of God and onto my own desires. It has been that same pride that has caused my body, which is God's temple, to need to be rebuilt because I have used it and abused it for my own desires instead of God's. Most of us do not see pride in our lives. For while it is easy to see pride in others, it is very difficult to see it in ourselves. And the more we have it in ourselves, the more we dislike it in others. I can look at others and see that they are thinking about themselves. When it comes to their issues with food, I see their bodies getting larger and larger, but my heart is not right with God. Because instead of seeing my own sin, I am looking at the sin of others. I have an issue with pride and self-righteousness. I desire to eat that extra bite when I am not hungry. I take that bite at times and it ends up being six extra bites. I look down at others for not understanding the concept of not eating the way God created our bodies to eat. I look down at those who are not trying to overcome this in their life. Lord, I confess this sin in my life. And I ask you to help me to look at my own heart, not to look at the sins of others. And I ask, Lord, that you would have mercy on me, a sinner. I learned that pride can be difficult to recognize. And the best thing I could do was to earnestly seek God in prayer and ask him to reveal to me any pride in my life so I can repent and forsake it. My prideful heart needs to be boasting in God's grace and what He has done in my life. Today my desire is to seek God and to praise Him for His goodness in my life. I pray that not only will I take, not take that extra bite of food, but I will have no desire to do so. I know that pride has shown the condition of my heart and the sin of pride starts in my mind. To just desire and think of things that will please me instead of pleasing God is having a heart of pride. I pray that the Lord would humble me and show me that the condition of my heart and remove the pride of looking down at others and the pride of desiring food over a relationship with God. I pray that I would seek the Lord earnestly and fervently and that God would change my heart and that I would draw closer to Him. Lord, give me a heart of humility. Change my heart to be like you and enable others to see how they can walk closer to you and seek you above all things. Lord, give me compassion and help me to see others through the eyes of Jesus. Give me a heart that is drawn close to you, a heart of humility.